Coming up on Austin Stories, entitled Karen and her entire family try to scam a restaurant for five figures. Our poster exposes their scheme and ruins them. How? Let's find out. Also, all my videos are in podcast form, so search for the Austin Stories podcast or check out the insane Karen story in the description at the link. Entitled mother and daughter Karens try to scam the hotel restaurant posted by High Phoenix with an update. Buckle in guys, it's a long one. I'm the food and beverage manager at a hotel that's right next to one of the most beautiful mountains in my country. That said, the hotel is literally in the middle of nowhere, a 20 kilometer drive to the nearest main road in town. When it comes to bookings for the restaurant, the bookings are made at reception and the information goes in our booking file, which I check every day. I only get hands-on involved when the booking consists of 20 or more people. Any less than that are left to the restaurant supervisors as I've started giving them more responsibilities. Now, on to the main story. Our reservations manager called me one day asking me to come take a look at an event that was just booked at our hotel. 25 guests, a woman, our entitled daughter, wants to have a birthday celebration for her mother's 52nd birthday. I think, easy peasy. I get in touch with her, I send her my wine and drinks list, and she chooses what she wants and prepays for the drinks. Easy 7,000 bucks. A week goes by, and I get called by the reservation manager that the lady has upped her booking to 50 guests now. Immediately. I'm thinking, oh crap, the space that she reserved for her celebration can hold maybe 40 people max and she is bringing a few children as well. I get in touch with her again, I explain that we'll have to move her to our main restaurant area as the West Wing won't accommodate all her guests. I advise her that she can gladly choose our private venue which is downstairs, it's mainly for conferences but she'll have to pay an additional 7,000 bucks for the venue hire. She opted for the restaurant. A side note, I mentioned the conference space as she wanted identical tables and chairs. Our restaurant has a mix of styles and I absolutely hate it, but anyway. I let her know that that'll be fine and then I ask if she wants to keep her buffet option the same to finalize what is due to cater for the additional people attending. She lets me know that she wants it the same as her original option, and I must just let her know what else is outstanding so that she can pay it. I'm thinking, great, awesome client will be a smooth evening as we are getting the finer details done two weeks prior. But would I be posting here if that were the case? I chat to our reservations manager, we reconcile all her POPs and get a final amount due. I call the entitled daughter back and let her know that about 8,000 bucks is due. She is absolutely shocked and asks, but why so much? This is how the conversation went. I said, ma'am, you have only paid $5,000 so far, excluding your drinks. The total amount for the food is $13,250. But I've already paid so much money. Why am I being charged so much for the food? Well, you'll be having 50 guests, and the buffet option that you've chosen is $265 per person. That comes out to $13,250. With you already having paid $5,000, this leaves $8,250 due. No, 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 no. Then something wasn't explained to me properly. When I spoke to your manager, she said that the buffet option that I chose, I only have to pay for 30 guests and then I can add people on if I want. I'm over here just, just trying to comprehend what this grown woman has just said to me. I go, ma'am, the buffet option that you chose can only be provided if your booking is 30 people minimum and then every person that you add onto that is charged on top of that. No, 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 OP, or original poster, this was not explained to me properly. I literally, literally facepalmed myself. Our manager has been doing her job beautifully for the last six plus years, so at this point, I was highly doubting that she explained it in the way that the entitled daughter was saying. But I give her the benefit of the doubt, rolling it out to a eh, simple miscommunication. We'll get it sorted, right? 
insert Donald Trump, wrong meme here. She finally accepts that she has to pay the remaining balance, but gives me the silent treatment after that. Over the next two weeks, I text her about certain details that I just want to confirm, but she never responded. Then, the event rolls around yesterday. Supervisor Juan and myself set the restaurant up neatly. We moved some other tables upstairs to our loft area so that our in-house guests can have a space for dinner without being bothered by the celebration in the main restaurant. Entitled Daughter finally shows up at around 11 a.m. with her decorator to get the final touches done. She is very happy with the space, compliments our service, and keeps calling me sweetie. Ugh. And then we leave her and the decorating team to do their thing so that we can get the lunch and dinner setups done. I'm nearing an eight hour shift by the time that I can finally sit down and just eat, having worked 12 days in a row now with multiple double shifts. <laughs> and suffice to say, I'm a little cranky. Now I do my own scheduling. See, I'm working a lot due to being understaffed in the restaurant, so I'm there a lot to help my staff. I took one, one bite of my food, and my office phone rings. I see that it's the front desk's extension. I answer. Receptionist one says, Hi OP, uh, the daughter Karen wants to speak to you. Me, trying not to cry, says, Okay, I'll be there now. I put my pizza slice down, take a sip of my Red Bull, and trot off to reception. I spot the entitled daughter Karen standing at reception, looking absolutely defeated. I put on my best customer service smile and speak in a sickly sweet voice. Hi ma'am, is everything alright? No, no it's not. I am just being told now that I cannot bring my DJ. I just stand there. I'm just dumbfounded. Why was I not told before that I cannot bring a DJ? I've already paid for him and I don't think I'll get my money back as he's already on his way here. Ma'am, ma'am, you, you never mentioned that you were bringing a DJ. No, no, I did. When I did the walk around with the manager, I mentioned that I was going to bring a DJ and she said that it was fine. I've wasted more money now. I give a quick glance toward the front office manager, a silent plea. And now the front office manager is being so rude to me, making me feel like that I am stupid, telling me that it's a public area and obviously a DJ would be a problem. I just look at her, just nodding. What am I going to do now? I guide her away from reception, explaining that, well, because this is a hotel, we cannot accommodate a DJ in the restaurant, as we have guests that would be disturbed by the music. We have to take our other guest into consideration. She sighs, <sighs> puts her hand in front of her mouth, and just says, is there any way we can get the DJ here? I tell her that the best that I can do is create a playlist for her on our sound system in the restaurant. She accepts this begrudgingly and wanders off to her decorating team. I shoot a look over to the front office manager again and I just see her smirking. <laughs> I love that woman's no-nonsense attitude. I disappear to my office again, my pizza is cold by now, and I just frown. I plop down on my chair and just shuffle the pizza into my mouth, trying to also get as much work done as possible before the start of the event at 4pm so that I can be present on the floor. 4pm rolls around and I am just exhausted. Having worked 10 hours already, I just need to stay around for an hour to make sure that everything is fine, then I can slip away. Psych! We set out 58 plates for 50 guests and 8 children, as was confirmed, and we let the party begin. They, they are loud. Oh my goodness. Supervisor 1, Supervisor 2, and myself have to constantly, constantly ask for the music to be put down softer, for them to not scream that we have guests in the loft area. But this falls on deaf ears. Supervisor 2 eventually said that if they continue to be too loud, we will have to ask them to leave. This finally kicks in. They tone it down. 
I make sure that my staff are okay, that all the areas are covered and have a quick chat with a few guests, and then I head off for the night. I have accommodation in the hotel as I was placed here on a temporary contract to fix the food and the beverage department, to then later be transferred to a hotel in the same group in my city about four hours away. I try to relax as much as possible, but knowing I have a proper Karen on my hands, I only stayed away for about an hour. I got dressed in casual clothes and headed back to the restaurant. What I saw nearly gave me a heart attack. Well, that and the three Red Bulls that I already had at this point. There were easily 60 people flocked in the restaurant, <laughs> not the 50 that were paid for. I walk into the kitchen, and the chefs are visibly panicking. They can't keep up with the amount of food that's being needed to replenish the buffet station. Executive chef yells out, OP, there are, there are more than 70 people. What is going on? And now the update about Karen's mom, Karen herself, and their crazy friend. I honestly didn't expect this to gain much traction, but who here doesn't love some classic drama? Okay, so after the executive chef was practically pooping her pants, I went to the front office manager's office with a look that screamed, emergency. I told her that there are way too many people here. She calmed me down because, well, I too can be a drama queen and grabbed two cigarettes for us to quickly go smoke. Once we were back inside, we went upstairs to the loft area that overlooks the restaurant. We did a walkabout and did a head count each. She counted 72, I counted 74, but I was absolutely exhausted, so I could have been wrong. She counted again, 72. At that point, front office manager was so tired of this woman and her antics, calling her a chance taker, that she just burst out laughing. Front office manager and I went to her office, and on our way, we looked for the Karen daughter so I could discuss the extra attendees. I couldn't find her at all. It was a themed event, and every single person wore white. A sea of freaking snow, almost. I shoot her a text, explaining that we have done a headcount, and now the additional buffets need to be rung up on her docket, and she needs to pay the balance so that we can settle it on the point of sale. I finally spotted her through the tinted window between the office and reception, phone ever so gracefully lighting up her face. She squinted stared at her phone some more, and whispered to the person next to her, and then called Supervisor 2 over to her. Oh boy, here we go. I chat some more with front office manager, and Supervisor 2 walks in, almost laughing. <laughs> OP, the Karen is asking for you. I grin at the front office manager, and she just wishes me luck. I walk over to our lounge area next to reception where Karen is sitting with three other ladies, one of which was wearing a big puffy white dress similar to a wedding dress. Aha, you must be the guest of honor. Karen says, OP, I'm stressing about this bill now. I was having such a great night and now I feel it is just spoiled. I look at her holding the check, a nice, fat 24,000 something bucks in bold. I snicker internally to myself. <laughs> this check was her drinks and all the buffets. Ma'am, you informed us that you would be attending with 50 guests. We have to charge you for the food that your guests have eaten. Thank goodness we always do keep a fair amount of food in the fridge as just in case of an emergency because we can just suddenly have a party of 20 people wanting to have lunch on a last minute walk in. But, but OP, the point of a buffet is that it's all you can eat. The food ran out so quickly. Ma'am, with all due respect, it would run out quicker than expected due to having to cater for over 70 people instead of 50. We catered for 50 people, having at least two and a half portions each. That's an extra 50 odd portions that were unexpectedly needed. This is where the entitled Mother Karen finally steps up. She says in her big old poofy dress looking down at me, This is not right. My daughter has paid a lot of money and still she is treated poorly. Your service staff are disgustingly rude. That lady, the front office manager, is so rude and it is just shocking. 
Yes, OP, the daughter says. I don't have this kind of money, and with all my money being wasted on the DJ that I couldn't get here, I'll only be able to pay on the 31st, which is four days after her event. My eyes widen a little at the sudden hostility, as I felt that I've been very respectful and have been trying to resolve this amicably. I reply, unfortunately, you will have to settle the balance before you leave the premises, whether that be when you check out tomorrow or leave tonight. We cannot allow you off of the property without paying. The entitled mother Karen huffs and puffs and says something to her daughter in a language that I don't understand. It's a very common language spoken here, but I'm part of the minority that doesn't speak it. I speak to the front office manager and supervisor too that she needs to sign her bill before she leaves the restaurant. I am just mentally drained and I peace out for the night. The next morning, a new day full of opportunities to resolve the bitterness from last night. A new day full of promising drama. I am up early, I get dressed, and I head for the restaurant. It is super quiet, and I make myself the most god-awful cappuccino that I've ever made in my life. I get to work, chat with the executive chef, and, being typical women, we gossip about the previous night. And always remember, speak of the devil, and you shall step on his tail. My office phone rings. It's reception. I giggle as I answer, eager for some drama. But, alas, I was not blessed. The security at the main gate gives each guest a slip with a gate code for when they leave. When a guest loses their slip, a senior manager has to escort the guest to the main gate, confirm that the guest has stayed at the hotel, sign their new slip, and off everyone goes. <laughs> I am lazy as heck. I refuse to walk the 500 meters or 600 meters way to the main gate, so I go to my hotel room, get my car keys, and drive to the main gate. Oh lordy, do I start drooling. It's the wine red colored Mustang GT the front office manager and I have been eyeing every time we went to smoke. Just pure chef's kiss perfection. Security lets them out, I wish them a pleasant trip, and drive back to the hotel. I forgot my cigarettes in my hotel room that morning, so I inform the executive chef that I'm taking my keys back to my room, grabbing my smokes, and then I want to go freaking smoke. It's nearly 10 a.m. and I need nicotine. On my way to my room, I pass reception. Oh no, there is the daughter Karen, mother Karen, and entitled friend. Entitled friend spots me, a little white lady that's been so accommodating to our every insufferable need, and snaps her fingers at me, beckoning me over like a mutt. I stick on a smile, just desperate to go smoke, rather wanting to put a fire out with my face than talk to this piece of work. She screams at me, you need to do something about front office manager. She is the rudest person that I have ever dealt with. You need to speak to her, teach her how to treat guests. I calmly raise my hands, asking her to please keep her voice down and to please explain what happened. She practically spits out a repetition of what she just said. I ask to be excused and I slip into the front office manager's office. She is just smirking. This is what front office manager told me happened when I was letting the guest out at the main gate. Receptionist 2 was helping them finalize payments so that they can check out and just leave to be Death Eaters elsewhere. Front office manager hears a slight commotion start up and goes to the front desk to ask if she can be of assistance. Entitled Mother Karen, Daughter Karen, and Entitled Friend just unleash at her, saying that she must not even speak to them, that she is rude, and Entitled Friend even dared her to come around to this side of the desk, while she's recording front office manager and threatening to post our terrible hotel on Twitter. Front office manager ignored everything after that and stepped back into her office. We contacted the director of operations for our group and explained the whole story. I actually heard him laugh through the earpiece. Front office manager grabs operations director's business card, hands it to me, and asks me to give it to them, to email him directly about all of their concerns. When I stepped out to hand it to them, explaining that we have spoken to the operations director, with a slight smile on my face, entitled friend looks defeated at this point. Taking the card, she sets it down on the counter and just walks away. 
In the beginning, they tried to pay less for more people, got caught, and then still brought more people thereafter. Then it turned to excuses like, oh no, I can't pay, to a flurry of verbal abuse to scare us into dropping the extra charges. After they paid and left, we burst out laughing, wishing oh so badly, wishing that the hospitality purge thingy could be real. That we get one time a year that we can pepper spray a guest. And we made some killer money last night, thanks to entitled Mother Karen and Daughter Karen finally coughing up what they owed us. I just do not understand how they can think they can pull this scam off. They go in and they say they want 50 people or whatever. They get 70. How You're going to notice, like your chefs, your staff is going to notice 20 more people. That's a large percentage gain. And then they try to sneak more people in and shirk their responsibilities of paying for it. And then when it all comes to a head, they escalate as the Karens are wont to do, as we all know they love, and they try to get out of it by going to the higher management. That doesn't work. They're just going to go higher and higher, and eventually somebody has to put their foot down, as everyone was doing, and then they say, no, you have to pay or you're literally not leaving this place. Then they finally know that they're wrong. They have no recourse, no way to victory. Then they just get mad and pouty, and they're like, oh, okay, we'll finally do this. Let me speak to your manager to report you, blah, blah. You know, that's just not how this world works. Maybe in her fantasy world, but not in the reality of our world. You know what, OP, great job. And to the Karens, get a, just get a hold of yourself, please, already. Let me know what you think as well. Karen attacks a blind disabled guy. He presses charges with the cops and ruins her like this. Click the video on the screen. You don't want to miss this crazy fallout, all right? And I will see you there.